Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and today we're back with another faction focus video for Warhammer the Old World. We are actually almost at the end for all the core factions, which has been quite the journey. But we can't have a journey without talking about the Orcs and Goblins. A kind of meme faction for Warhammer Fantasy, which, let's be honest, did kind of suffer every now and then when trying to make lists due to problems with animosity and so on. So... What we're going to do is the usual thing, we're going to check out the roster, we're going to check out the special rules, uh, some changes that I'm rather not too keen on, if I can be honest with you, and some other stuff. And once again, out of respect for Games Workshop for sending me the stuff a little bit earlier, I am not going to be going over all the point values and so on. Uh, we'll talk about those a little bit later down the line, however, as it comes to the whole creation of lists, uh, ideas for certain themes, and... Well, there's quite a lot that you can do still with all these factions, so without further ado, let's begin. Alright, we're going to talk about the roster, and this one's going to be a large one because, well, there's a lot of options when it comes to the greenskins. This is because you'll end up with a multitude of different weapon options, thus increasing how many troops that you can actually bring around. Also, just a quick note, I might have to edit a little bit more, so you might get a little bit more jumps, and it's because uh, my neighbor has decided to start doing construction without warning people. Awesome! But yeah, let's start off with the characters. So you can have 0 to 1 of these characters per 1000 points. A Black Orc Warboss, a Standard Orc Warboss, or an Orc Weird Knob per 1000 points. Then you can have as many as you want of the following. Black Orc Big Bosses, Orc Big Bosses, Orc Weird Boys, Goblin Bosses, Goblin Shamans, Night Goblin Bosses, and Night Goblin Shamans. Now it is important to note one thing here, that there are separate bosses, so you get the war boss and the big boss for the goblins and the night goblins, and same thing with the shamans, you've got the standard shaman, and which is an odd knob and a odd git. Don't you worry, you're not losing them out, it's just the way that the book has it laid out. Now, if we go into core, this is 25% of your army must be spent on this, you can have as many as you want as the following. Orc mobs, goblin mobs, snotling mobs, Goblin Spider Rider mobs, Goblin Wolf Rider mobs. Now, here is when you start getting some extra restrictions. 0 to 1 Night Goblin mobs per Night Goblin Chief or Night Goblin Shaman. 0 to 1 Night Goblin Squig Herds per Night Goblin Chief or Night Goblin Shaman. And finally, if your general is a Black Orc boss, you can have up to 1 unit of Black Orcs as a core choice which is pretty damn tasty. Uh, if you're scared about not being able to run Night Goblin armies, you're likely going to be bringing around four characters anyway, which allows you to bring, what, uh, eight choices? Well, technically four mobs and four squig herds. So yeah, Night Goblin armies are completely possible. Now, let's go into special, which is up to 50% of your army. Black Orc mobs, Troll mobs, Orc Boar Boy mobs. I had to kind of record that a few times. <laughs> uh, Orc Boar Chariots, Goblin Wolf Chariots, and Snotling Pump Wagons. Then we come into the restrictions once again, which is 0 to 1 Squig Hopper mobs per Night Goblin Chief or Night Goblin Shaman. You've also got 0 to 2 Goblin Bolt Throwers per 1000 points in your army. Now, lastly we've got Rare, which is up to 25%. You can have as many Arachnorok spiders and giants as you can fit in there. And then we got the restrictions. So 0 to 1 Mangler Squigs per Night Goblin Chief. There's a big Night Goblin focus here. Like, it's pretty interesting. Uh, then 0 to 1 Rock Lobbers per 1000 points. And finally 0 to 1 Doom Divers per 1000 points. Overall the roster is quite large. Uh, the Savage Orcs aren't missing. We're going to talk about that a little bit later because it's a bit of a change to how Savage Orcs work. But overall, the roster is very, very large, and yeah, you should be fine to replicate with anything. I don't think there is actually anything new, but you shouldn't really need anything new, because the problems with the Orcs and Goblins were never the roster. And I imagine that we will get some technically new units, a la Storm of Chaos style, by the time that we get their Arcane Journal. Alright, we're going to talk about the special rules because there's actually quite a few. The first one being Biggins. When engaged in combat, a model with a special rule has a plus one modifier to its strength characteristic and gains the Armor Bane 1 special rule. Once again, yeah, you know, Biggins, still a thing, so don't you worry, it's just like an upgrade as per usual. 
Next, we've got choppers. So during a turn which it charged, a model with a special rule may re-roll any rolls to wound of a natural one and improve its armor piercing characteristic of its weapons, so plural here, by one. And this only applies to non-magical weapons and it doesn't apply to mounts also. But yes, if you've got additional hand weapons with your black orcs, yeah, you know, this would be a thing. Next, we've got Du Bois. So this one's super simple. Your army must include one Black Orc boss for every Black Orc mob it includes, and vice versa. So yeah, if you want to bring in Black Orcs, you need to bring in Black Orc characters. If you want to bring in Black Orc characters, you need to bring in Black Orc mobs. Next is Fear of Elves. Yep, yeah, so any elves will cause fear to units with that special rule. Once again, you know, goblins will be scared of elves. The next one is Ignore Goblin Panic. A lot of the orcs will basically just ignore goblins if they're destroyed or they break and flee and so on within six inches, so you don't have to worry. This is, again, useful if you're one of these people who like a bit of a mixed war, which a lot of people might, to be honest. Plus, I mean, you know, orcs generally don't care about uh, <laughs> goblins anyway. Then we've got Ignore Panic, which is pretty much the same thing, because black orcs generally don't really care when anyone else is panicking. It's one of the benefits of being genetically modified by the Chaos Dwarfs, isn't it? Next we have Quell Impetuosity, and this one is just basically, it stops units within six inches from using the Impetuous rule. This is not animosity, uh, this is more of a uh, universal special rule, and we'll be going into the universal special rules later down the line, so don't worry. Next, we've got Tuskar Charge, and during a turn which it's charged, a Warboar's Tusk's hand weapon have a strength characteristic of plus one and armor piercing characteristic of minus one. So, yeah, you know, if you're going to be using a lot of boars, which I will, um, this is a pretty good rule. Next, we've got one. I'm going to read it fully. Once per game during the command subphase of their turn, this character may attempt to invoke the power of the war by making a leadership test using their own leadership. If this test is passed until the start of your next turn subphase, this character, their mount, and any orc unit they may have joined may re-roll any rolls to hit of a natural one, and when calculating combat result for that turn, may claim an additional bonus of one combat result point, which is pretty good. Rerolling any to hits of a natural one is pretty good if you've got a lot of orcs, especially if you've got with additional hand weapons. And the last one is war paint. So savage orcs are still possible, it's just a little bit restricted. So war paint gives its wearer a six up ward save against any wound suffered. However, any model with a special rule cannot wear any armor. They can, however, have a shield, which is something very common with the black orcs. Overall, yeah, pretty good special rules. You've got a decent amount. It's two pages. And the orcs generally have a lot of, like, universal special rules. Uh, it's something that you'll just kind of get used to as time progresses, so don't you worry. It's the same as pretty much every other faction. All right, we're going to talk about magic, and this is where things get a little bit interesting. You see, you have a core magic, which is attached to you. That's war magic, but you also have some other magic that you're able to take. Orc Shamans, for example, can take War Magic, Battle Magic, and Elementalism. Goblin Shamans can take Elementalism or War Magic. And Night Goblin Shamans can take Illusion or War Magic. It's a bit of a weird thing seeing them take other laws of magic, considering that obviously uh, the magic itself comes from Gork and Mork. And we do have many laws for Gork and Mork, but um, it just kind of throws me off. I mean, it kind of makes sense, though, for the Night Goblins to have Illusion. It's just the whole elementalism and battle magic. Battle magic is just like core laws, you know? Like, it's the eight color laws mixed up. It's also important to note that you have the law of Gork and the law of Mork. These are smaller than the average mini laws as they're only two spells each. The Orc shamans can take the law of Gork. The law of Mork is there for the Goblin shamans. And, I mean, that's kind of thematic. I like it. It's kind of like what we have in Total War also, which is the Law of the Big War and the Little War. So, let's talk about the spells. We'll start off with the Law of Gork, the first spell being Brain Burster. This is an Assailment spell with a casting value of 10+, plus and the range is in combat. A single enemy model the caster is engaged with suffers a single Strength 6 hit with multiple wounds d3 special rule and no armor save or regeneration saves allowed. Ward saves can be made as normal. This is, I guess, good for dealing with characters or big monsters if you're dealing against some chaos trolls and so on. The next one is Gaze of Gork. 
this is a magic missile with a casting value of 9 plus and a range of 5d6 inches. Draw a straight line 5d6 inches in length from the caster's base edge. Any model, friend or foe who falls under that line suffers a strength 5 hit with an AP of minus 3. That is actually fairly decent. Well, better than decent, but you get what I mean. The spells are actually quite good. Now let's start moving towards the Law of Mork. Mork's Curse is the first one, which is a hex with a casting value of 8 plus and a range of 18 inches. This is a Remains in Play spell. Whilst the spell is in play, the target enemy unit must reroll any armor saves of a natural 6. And finally, we've got Itchy Nuisance, another hex spell, which has a casting value of 9 plus and a range of 15 inches. Until the start of your next turn subphase, the target unit suffers a minus D3 modifier to its toughness and initiative characteristics to a minimum of 1, which, yeah, pretty good. Overall, I mean, I follow the Lore Gork a little bit more. I'm liking that a bit better, uh, mostly because I'm more of a aggressive player. But if you're going to be playing stuff like Night Goblins or Standard Goblins and you just want to meme with just loads and loads, because they're stupid cheap, by the way. Um, yeah, like <laughs> you'll probably want to bring this in and level the playing field a bit. <laughs> Alright, so I want to talk about one thing really quickly before we get into the pros and cons. There's not a lot to talk about the Orcs and Goblins. It's mostly because they are very much the same in terms of 8th edition. But one thing is, uh, you can't really go full Savage Orc, which is kind of disappointing. I mean, you can if you really stretch it, but yeah, let's talk about it. So with Orc Bosses, this is the melee version, not the Spellcaster, you can have 0 to 1 per 1000 points, which gets them Frenzy, which then allows them to get War Paint. It's an 8 point upgrade. So in a 2000 point game, which I imagine is going to be the average, you can have two Orc War Bosses with this, right? And this is the exact same thing with Orc Shaman. So in total, you can have uh, four characters, which is a mixture of... Uh, bosses and shamans, this is both kind of, for the old distinction, lords and hero variants, right? But it's only going to be two of each, so two bosses and two uh, shamans. This is the same restriction when it comes to the orc boys, for example. This is the standard orc boy or core unit. They're baseline five points, by the way. Uh, when you bring them in with the frenzy and then with warpaint, there will be a unit of seven baseline, not counting any other upgrades that you might have, for example, uh, command or weapon choices. But you can only have two units of uh, orc boy mobs, which is a shame per thousand points, right? Obviously, this is in the purpose of frenzy. Uh, and yeah, I mean, you won't be able to get a full army. Uh, it's a shame. I mean, it's not a deal breaker, but... You know, Savage Orcs are one of those parts of the culture, which is very unique in its own sub-faction. And the same, by the way, goes for the um, Ball Boy mobs. It's not a real big deal, it's just I'm a really big theme player, and I'm hoping that the reason that this has come to play is because maybe an army of infamy will focus around the Savage Orcs, uh, because they don't really have that much. What they do have is those core units, which are able to switch around to a lot of different weapon types. In fairness, you could still build an army around the Boar Boys. I mean, you've got quite a decent amount of core options and so on, uh, but it would be based around them rather than them as a whole, right? With the Night Goblins, even though there's still restrictions, you can still go full Night Goblin. It's still more than possible to do so uh, because you're going to be bringing, what, four characters, which will then give you four core choices. And then obviously you've got the Squig Herds too. I'm, I'm trying to hope for the best for an army of infamy. It's, I know it's not the most popular list. I mean, it wasn't really great uh, for 8th edition either, but it's more theming is important. The models do exist. I understand that they're trying to maybe not use too much stuff, which is now in Age of Sigma, but the divide is always going to exist because those universes are linked up. Whether we like it or not, or Games Workshop likes it or not, they're still linked. All right, we're jumping into the pros and cons. I don't think we're going to be spending too much time here. Orcs have a lot of variety, and I mean a stupid amount of variety, because you've got the goblins, you've got the night goblins, you've got the orcs. Uh, those themselves have all these different weapon options too. I mean, just looking at the basic orc boys, you've got basic hand weapon and light armor as base, and then you can give them war bows, additional hand weapons, thrusting spears, throwing spears, uh, shields too. There are so many options that one character line, so, well, unit line there for the orc mobs, is more or less five, well, more, if you don't count shields being added in and so on, in terms of core choices, right? There's so many different things, and that 
can actually go further when you start looking towards goblin mobs or pretty much everything else. You've got a stupid amount of choices. The variety is there. You've also got, you know, loads of big monsters. The trolls is basically three different types of trolls. So yeah, you're pretty much stacked there. If you're just focusing on orcs and goblins, you're going to have so much variety that you're just going to be able to play around with loads of different things. A con is what we've been talking about for the past 30 minutes is uh, Savage Orcs. Uh, no Savage Orc armies. Again, hoping that they have it in an arcane journal uh, because, I mean, I've got a stupid amount of uh, Savage Orcs. I've always loved them. They haven't been great, but it's just, it's nice to see, right? Variety is the spice of life, and believe it or not, nothing is more varied than the orcs and goblins. Another bonus here is that no animosity. Animosity is now gone, which removes a big issue that you had with the orcs and goblins. For those who didn't know or didn't play back then, animosity is, well, was a rule which essentially had your orcs and goblins killing each other, and it was just not nice. You played orcs for the memes, not for the competitive. You could, with certain banners and so on, but it wasn't the most friendly for comp play. When it comes to your army, you mostly focus on melee and monsters, but you have a little bit of everything, which is a good thing. But yeah, don't expect orcs to be on par with, well, pretty much every other faction. It's just not how it works. But you're getting the memes, you're getting the big damage in terms of upfront and personal with the black orcs, with the orc mobs. You're getting fanatics and netters with the night goblins, so you do have some tricks up your sleeve, some very good fast cav with the wolf riders, and some hard-hitting monsters too. So, yeah, pretty happy with how everything is going with the uh, Orcs and Goblins. Obviously, my main comparison here is 8th edition because that was the last edition of Warhammer Fantasy. Some people sometimes comment, oh, well, this was there in 6th edition and so on. But I'm always going to focus on the last edition. Well, ignoring the end times thing because that was like 8.5. As usually the majority of the players, the last thing they played was the last edition. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Let's start a bit of a discussion. Uh, it's a little bit shorter, this one, but it's pretty much all that needed to be said. And uh, we should have another one coming out later today. Uh, it's There's so much that I want to talk about. It's, it's insane. I'm really, really happy, by the way. It's It's been nice to really get back into what I originally wanted the channel for. So this is really, really nice. 